Hello, Dominic here from the Bournemouth Writing Festival. Welcome to another chat with a local author, writer or writing professional in our local area. Now, I'm hoping to release one of these interviews every Monday evening at six o'clock. So if you want to be notified when these uh, interviews are um, released, then remember to subscribe. Uh, there's a button along the bottom there somewhere. So just click that button, subscribe. And I think you get an instant notification in your inbox when a new interview has been released. So today I am really excited to speak to Estelle Phillips, who is a poet, um, and Estelle is very much integrated into the poetry community down here in Bournemouth. So hello, Estelle. Good morning, and thank you very much for having me. I'm so delighted to be here. And also, you know, it's been so sweltering, hasn't it? And finally, it's the temperature's dropped a degree or two. So we're like, oh. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much uh, for being here. So let me start off um, by delving into a little bit of your background, because I, I think you started off in law and now you've gone into poetry. So tell us about your transition from law into what you do now. Oh, that's a good, really good question. Yeah. So basically, I, it's right. I was a lawyer. I was, uh, I was working in the city and I was doing like big ticket finance stuff. And then uh, um, I had a car crash. I was a passenger in a car crash. And uh, oh, it was really terrible. Yeah, it was really terrible. It was life changing and um, frightening. And uh, um, yes, it was bad, right? And uh, it changed my life. And uh, after that, I was unable to continue in law because of the injuries that I sustained. Yeah. So that, and when, when something like that happens, um, um well it's like um did you reevaluate life and think do you know what there's there's a different meaning to life well eventually you do but it took me a long time to get to that point because um the first i mean it was it was a very bad thing and it was lasted a very long time and there were a lot of phases to it but um uh when when things are so catastrophically and suddenly changed what happened to me was that uh i had no idea like who i was anymore so i'd lost all these things that i was used to and that my life evolved around and i've got four children and i'm a single mum and i, I mean the, the shock it was a shock it was like it was more than an earthquake it was uh it was like turning upside down of the, of, of our world and um uh, and it was a really truly terrible thing for the children at that time and um anyway so basically you come out of that and you don't have a clue who you are you don't i didn't anyway uh i i didn't have a clue who i was and um you just sort of like thrash about yeah or oh no i'm just saying for myself right i was pretty feeble yeah you just kind of like thrash about and um and in you, there's so few things that I can do now. There's a lot of things that I can't do that I used to be able to do. And you, you just don't know what to do. So I just, in the end, I just write, okay, just do anything. Yeah, yeah just, just, just do something, but do anything. And I've always written poetry throughout my life, always. And, uh, and that was what I turned to. And um, so I essentially continued the focus on, on my poetry and and that just sort of like built and built and obviously as you know i don't just write poetry i write across genres so um my practice my professional writing practice is split into prose and poetry um yeah and i've tried to separate them but i can't <laughs> I, I didn't know that about you at all estelle so that's fascinating because my next question was going to be about inspiration and where do you get your inspiration from because you have been quoted as uh, your work as being beautifully brutal I'm just hearing some of those what you know what you've been through because you talk about you write and perform about love and war and you know all, all sorts of things so where do, where does that come from does that come from a place of hurt and it's almost like like therapy for you or, or where, where, where do you get your inspiration from is the question yeah it's like you know this like thing like this therapy question yeah it's a, a really interesting question and I've I've seen like other people ask it you know be asking it and answer it as well and um I, I actually don't know the answer to that yeah i don't know like the therapy thing but 
uh, over the years, I have sort of like uh, thought a bit more about inspiration because it's such an interesting notion, isn't it? Yeah, for a creative, where do you get where do you get your inspiration from? But I kind of like think that it's not actually inspiration. So it's like uh, whenever I'm writing, whatever I'm writing, uh, it's pretty much because I can't not do it. Yeah. So it's more of a compulsion. So is that inspiration? That's not really inspiration, is it? That's more of a compulsion. So like, if it's a compulsion, then I don't know, like my main motivation in life are like easily two things, love and beauty, yeah? And you're right, because both of those conclusions in terms of what are your priorities in life, both of those conclusions are as a result of not dying. And continuing to be alive, yeah. So, and so it is. You are really right about that, Dominic. That is absolutely transforming in terms of your philosophy, in terms of what you think about, in terms of what you care about, and I suppose in terms of what you think about. Mm. But one of the big. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. And I think it's a really interesting discussion because the way I think about it, you know, and I and I speak to you know, hundreds of writers. Um, through the Bournemouth Writing Festival, and that you know, because they, I kind of think about it in terms of external, internal. So external inspiration is getting, you know, from from external sources, and um, the, the the therapy, I suppose, is internal because when you write, it's a very personal, and you have to dig deep to find that emotion. So I suppose where I'm seeing it from is very yin and yang. Is like external, uh, external sources and internal sources, and how do they combined to create yeah yeah i mean i think that's accurate yeah what you've just said is accurate it like it inevitably is a process of two problems coming together um so i think like if you would like to be simple terms like the things that occupy my mind more than anything is the beauty of the world the beauty of the world around you and then when you start looking closely at that the beauty of nature right so Take, for example, uh, uh, one of those oily colored flies, yeah? Those oily colored flies, they're like this big, yeah? This big. Their bodies are, are this amazing, iridescent, beautiful oil. And then they've got these wings that are thin, transparent, gauze wings. And then they've got these legs that come up and down like that, yeah? And then the, their eyes and, and the way that they fly. And we all take it for granted, but like, hold on a minute, right? If man had created a flying machine that was remotely capable of looking like that or doing anything like that, yeah, you'd be, whoa, what is that genius? Yeah. So just because we're used to it, like, it's as if we don't see the wonder in it. But I think that once you, when you've nearly died and then you come back to life, you're like, oh my God. Did you see that fly? It's amazing, yeah. So, where, I, I understand that, but where do you see the beauty in you know some of the things you write about? You know, like war and you know, kind of you know, a, a car crash. You know, that's not beautiful, is it? That's not love. So, how do you? How do you? What's your thought process when you're writing about those? Um, yeah. So um, uh, reconciliation. Yeah. So. Um, it's true that in life you just it, it's just is a fact that things are just not always beautiful love is not always like lovely yeah love is still love but it's not necessarily lovely but this does not demean the intrinsic significance or importance of those things so when you're and, and obviously this is very much tempered by my experience yeah so i have this life and then there was this terrible thing and it was like black for about 10 years it was a prolonged period of time yeah but still you want this beauty yeah you want to survive and then you do survive and then the beauty is all there and this kind of like this insight into this black period is an inevitable it's an inevitable fluency and um, that fluency has it has its own consequences, and so it does inevitably go into your writing. But the beauty of it is that you can have that prolonged, really horrible thing, and you can survive it, and then you can see this other stuff which is beautiful. And it's just a fact that 
you can't have everything like life is just not a constant cream cake yeah and so if you accept that as a fundamental premise then the reconciliation of of those like horrible things is in itself it, it is in itself a kind of beauty and one of the greatest challenges of something like that is managing to um find joy right to find joy with all this because it's all in my head obviously right it's all like <laughs> but i want to make room for joy and appreciation of beauty and love and that is sort of our that's what i'm striving for but against that backdrop right and and as i said in my preamble in, in my introduction i said that you're very much ingrained in the poetry community or the community here in bournemouth the writing community so tell me um you know how important it is for you to be ingrained in the community here well but personally personally it's like very important it is very important because um for a start, like when you're talking about poets and writers and people like that, and this is my natural place to be. Yeah, this is my natural place to be. So, but this type of community is is a very um, uh, not not exactly organic. I wouldn't say organic, but it's very it's a very uh, nice. It's a real community. So it's less affected by our capitalist motivations it's less it's less bling bling right it's less affected by money people are generally not making decisions based on how much money they're going to get from that other person or from that deal so if you take that away immediately you've got a much more human society but there is also something i think that there is something to this notion that people who are familiar with their feelings and writing about their feelings which is what we've been discussing that there's a lot of consideration for other people and so creative communities are really really important um because they exist within this other community of uh sort of like materialism and judgment in my opinion and a lot of other things which honestly dominate really don't matter yeah and i can tell you that for for certainty that all that stuff it really doesn't matter yeah but these communities of writers where people are quite often sensitive and working really hard and being very authentic and trying to deliver beauty as they see it and love as they see it it's a it's a vulnerable place to be you know like the first time you i performed on stage i felt like i was completely naked yeah and i did and you don't want to do well that's why being in a community is so important because they're all like yeah 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 it's okay yeah it's really amazing and every single person who writes and puts it out into the world are being both incredibly vulnerable and also incredibly brave um and i just love the the fact that people writers that do eventually put their their words out to the world you know we, we need to hear their voices and that's really important so i want to um kind of talk about the the um the community side of things because you uh you created the 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 poetry, uh, the the community poem, which was part of the Bournemouth Writing Festival. So, tell us a little bit about that and what came out of it. Right. Okay. I'm really delighted to be asked about the community landscape poem that I did for Bournemouth because uh, it was absolutely, from my perspective, mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely mind blowing. So, like you, you have, as you probably do as well. Like you have these notions that there's a lot of creativity and a lot of thinking and a lot of kind of artistry in people, don't you? And you think, if only I could get at it, if only I could get at it. Mm -hmm. And so when I was like, like arranging or setting it all up, I really, really wanted to try and trigger the innate poetry and the innate thought and beauty in people passing by who had never really considered themselves to be poets or writers or, 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 or even perhaps artistic, yeah? And, well, this incredible thing happened through the day. So what happened was that it was set up so that so that people could come and write. And uh, the theme was, you know, what's your favourite form of landscape? Yeah. And literally passers by were coming along and writing down what was their favourite form of landscape. Yeah. And when people wrote it down, 
we put it up on the wall where the landscape poem was on display. And what happened was that as the day went by, more and more people did it. And more and more people were coming down and they were seeing what others had written. And I think what was happening was that they were realising that those ordinary things that other people had written, they weren't, in fact, ordinary at all. They were, in fact, meaningful insights and snippets and compromises and reconciliations and statements. They were really creative. And throughout the day, more and more people came. And because I would say the vast majority of people who contributed to that were not what I would call practicing writers or practicing poets. And so the landscape poem became a wall of the sort of like beautiful secrets, hopes and desires of these passing people. And it transformed into not only like a work of art for each individual thing, but it became in its might and in its like authenticity, a, a monumental work of art. And uh, I was bringing tears to my eyes talking about it now, but I was like, I was so humbled by it, Dominic. Yeah, I was so humbled by all these people. They came and they wrote genuinely. Oh, sorry. It's like, <laughs> honestly, well, when you looked at it, when you looked at the final thing, it was really an emotional statement of the hearts and minds of people who live in Bournemouth. And I was overwhelmed by the success of it. Yeah. And I was just about to say that, you know, you're right, because it was a smorgasbord of different types of people all contributing. It, you know, didn't matter who did it. It all, they, it was all collated into this, you know, one big monumental, as you say, uh, piece of art. So it, was, it was amazing. It was really impactful to see, wasn't it? Yeah. The final thing. It was like, you see it, you just couldn't, you couldn't not be sort of like, you know, blown away by it, really. And I was so grateful because when people do that, you know, it's a bit like when you're naked on stage doing that. And then you'd see how people were together, like people would sometimes come in couples or like some on their own. But when people were like doing it together, you could see the dynamics between them and the dynamics like re demonstrated how, how, how fresh and, and how pure and committed they were to this process. Oh, was, honestly, Dominic, it was just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well done for you for even for creating it and uh and bringing it to us at the board of writing festival so lastly i just want to chat about what the future holds for you and i know that you're doing something around nature recovery so do you want to explain what that is and and talk about some of the things that you're looking to do in the, in the near future oh thanks dominic yeah i'm at the moment i'm writing a, a nature memoir which is sort of like uh talks about the, how how to recover from or how i did and did not, or rather did not and then did, recover from being a passenger in a car crash and all that entailed, entailed. And basically what happened was that I sort of like, I faffed around with it and was nearly failed by it. And then at the last minute, I made a dash for, I made a dash for home, Dominic, which is where I am now, which is how I came to meet you guys. And things have been getting better since then. So it's about recovering in the landscape. But it's about other things too. I've got a really interesting background because my my grand one of my grannies came from Norway, so I'm immigrants. I'm descended from a Im Norwegian immigrant. My other granny's Welsh, and uh, uh, so like the family is like Welsh and Norwegian, uh, and lots and lots of like really interesting things happened. And one of the things that was interesting was that when my Norwegian granny came to England, she ended up in the gardener's working in the gut with the gardeners um in over so like Banford way and they had this amazing uh kind of like music scene going on it was like it's amazing yeah so that's what i'm doing and i'm a member of the emerging writers cohort of literature works which is a, a really brilliant program and uh so there's only a few of us and we're essentially mentored by writers and i'm partnered with like little toller and um and we get to we get we get to be taught a lot and i've never been taught in my life before so i'm like whoa this is crazy uh and we get loads and loads of lectures and also we get to be in community with each other yeah 
Amazing. Well, Estelle, thank you so much for joining me today. And wow, what a journey you've had um, right from, you know, your beginnings in law all the way through to writing community poems in Bournemouth and, uh, and beyond. So thank you so much for joining me, Estelle. Thank you very much, Dominic. It's been a real pleasure. And the Bournemouth Writing Festival is so ace. Yeah. I'm looking forward to next year. I can't wait to hear what you've got on. Well, uh, that's in the planning at the moment and we'll be releasing uh, all the details very, very soon. So thank you and thank you everybody else for joining us today. Um, hope you enjoyed our chat. Um, and as I said, uh, hoping to release one of these every Monday evening at six o'clock. So don't forget to subscribe, press that button there and I shall see you next time. Thank you so much. Take care.